Agape family and friends, great news. There are three ways that you can give cheerfully in the house of God. We encourage you to partner with us to advance God's kingdom to go further and farther into many people's lives. The first way you can give is number one, give by phone through Cash App, dollar sign, love like him. Number two, give at www.lovelikehim.today. Click on the donate button and follow the prompts there. Lastly, number three, you can mail in your charitable givings to 345 Green Street, Have It a Grace, Maryland, 21078. Agape Church would like to thank you for your charitable giving today, and we pray that the Lord will shower you with his choice blessings. Good evening, good, good evening, evening, good evening. Welcome in. This is Midweek Momentum Come Bible on Study. in the room. We are huddling in the house. Yes. I'm Pastor Vincent. And I'm Pastor Yvonne. And we like to welcome you to Bible Study on tonight. Yes. We are getting ready to dive into God's Word. We are grateful and thankful that God has brought us through our week yes. and that we could come together here in this virtual space to receive more of His grace mm -hmm. and get into this Word together. So who's ready for the Word tonight? Say yeah. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. We are picking back up in our... A uh, series called Unity. Come on. Somebody say <laughs> Unity. Unity. U-N-I-T-Y. That's what I'm talking about. So go ahead and tune in in your word, our word, as we read God's holy word from Galatians chapter 6, verse 10 on tonight. That's where we're going to dive in, get our foundational footing, and jump off into our continued study. And I'm so excited, Pastor. So excited. So while you guys are getting to that scripture, make sure that you go ahead and, and scan our QR code. Mm-mm-mm. It's right here because you can follow along in our notes on tonight. We want to make sure that note takers are cycle breakers. And if you've been challenged with having unity in certain areas of your life, we pray that this message on tonight is just going to add spiritual value to you to make you a better Christian in all aspects and areas of your life. And also make sure you share with somebody and let everybody know that you're in a huddle. Find us at Agape Church under score love like him and if you have not subscribed hit the little red subscribe button right now so that way you get the notification when we come on live wednesday night at 7 7 yes. p.m all right i know that you shared i know that you hit the qr code i know that you got the notes and you are ready to dive in so you should be at galatians 6 and 10 and it says in your word our word the holy word of god says therefore somebody say therefore therefore whenever we have the opportunity we should do good to everyone especially to those in the family of faith. Come on, family, let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, God, we're grateful and thankful that we get to rightly divide your word of truth, that we get to dive in, go deeper, further, and farther in our relationship, our real relationship, and our walk of faith with you. Holy Spirit, have your way and help us tonight, dear Father God, as we go further in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God here and at home say amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. All right, All right let's right, settle family. in. I'm so excited. As um, Pastor said, we are still continuing on tonight in our series of unity. So somebody say it with me at home. Unity. unity. Bless the Lord. And so as we are diving in to more of what we're going to be talking about on this specific topic, we are doing 10 practical and relatable and obtainable uh -huh. somebody say obtainable obtainable that will be useful in the in our lives and so tonight we want to give you some principles to ensure that you are functioning mm, functioning in unity that you are doing things in harmony at home at work amongst your community and the part of uh, that is really important to us really important is the body, body of Christ, Christ. <laughs> is the body of Christ. And here's what's so awesome is because when we work together, we get things done. Get it done. Because when you're having divi division in many things, it seems like you're going nowhere. You're chasing your tail or there's a lot of friction and aggravation that is going on in certain areas of our lives. So we want to make sure that we get you these um, 10 principles or 10 practical, relatable, obtainable mm -hmm. and useful things on tonight. And so we're going to talk 
and dive in on Apostle Paul, right? Yes. But and all the things that he shared about the community of unity. The community of unity. Now, there's 10, as Pastor Yvonne said, ten. but we're only diving into the first two. Just two. We're going to unpack two tonight. 10 will be a lot for one night, but come back in the upcoming weeks and as we get to the other ones. But we're going to go one and two tonight. One and two. And what's so awesome in all of these 10, we're only talking about two, but all of these 10 have a, um, a redundant or a reoccurring phrase. Uh -huh. And I want everybody at home to say this phrase with me. It's it? on the screen. It says the, the same. same. Uh-huh. The same. And a lot of times we, we think of the same and we're like, uh, well, I'm not like you. And last week we talked about that. There's a lot of things that uh, we are together in, but we're not the, the same. The, no, well, we're the same, but we're not similar. Mm -hmm. We're so, similar, but we're not the right, same. Right. So I like tacos with tomatoes on it, and you definitely you, not. Yeah. So we we have some similarities, um, but God wants us to be the same in in some things, and that's what we're going to break down to you on tonight. And right, want, exactly right. So we want to be the same, the same how, the same in our mind, mm -hmm. the same in how we view these things, yes. the same in how we would uh, deal with them if we had an encounter or a situation or a circumstance. Most importantly, keeping our mind, our heart and our uh, focus is on the fact that we're the same because we're all following right. the same Lord and Savior, yeah. Jesus Christ. And because we're unified in the family of faith, our forever family of faith, as we call it here at Agape Church, because we're unified in that regard, that's what makes us the same. Come on, somebody shout out the same. The same. That's what I'm talking about. So what does that word mean? And why does Apostle Paul continue to say it in these various scriptures that we're going to read? And you might be even asking yourself, well, why was Paul, was Paul advising us to be identical Mm -hmm. copies of one another and the answer to that is unequivocally no, no. he was not advising us to be uh, carbon copies of one another I love using that term carbon copy because carbon used to be underneath papers and right. y'all don't even know y'all too Receipts young even know and all kind of stuff they don't even know what car copy paper yeah. carbon Type copy writers <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. The fact is, I, back I in the I'm day, exactly. Back in the day, there used to be these apparatuses called carbon sheets that would help you to make an exact yeah. copy of whatever you were writing on the top. God wow. does not desire for us to be the same, beloved. Not the same in that regard. Similar, surely, mm. as, as we're both humans. She's a woman and I'm a man, but we're both humans. We're yes. similar, but not the same. Not the same. The, check this out. You know what? The reality is this, beloved. God will give you anything in this life. There's only one thing He won't give you. Ooh. Somebody else's life. Somebody else's life. Why? Because that he does so not true. want you to be the same. He's built you to be like a snowflake. You're one of one. Say I'm one of one. I'm one of one. So he so that in itself sets the tone for the argument that he doesn't That's want right. you to be identical in he nature, doesn't. but he wants you to be similar similar in nature. And how can we be similar? Because we can be unified in the body of Christ. We can become a community of unity. And that's what Apostle Paul is giving us through this illustration that we'll find over in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. Go there. If not, it'll be a on the screens, but go there with me so you can see it for yourself and, and read as, it out of your own Bible. You know, and as you guys are traveling there, I love how pastors really just kind of making these things clear for us because some of us are still thinking, well, are we supposed to be the same or are we supposed to be similar? Mm -hmm. And um, as we are, you know, given all several different types of examples, when we get to these 10, they are the same because when we are Christians, Christians. and we're following after our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh -huh. he causes us to have this direct, intentional, same mindset. Right. And so as he's going into 1 Corinthians, I'm hoping that you guys are there because we're going to throw it up on the screen. First uh, Corinthians 12, we're talking about having the same mindset and the same things that God wants us to have in the body of Christ. So That's here right. we go. So Apostle Paul explains how we can all be in the same church, mm -hmm. worshiping the same God, yeah. but be different, but yet the same. Mm. Here we, Just, here we go. Here we go. Verse 12 says, The human body has many parts, mm -hmm. but the many parts make up the whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. There it wow. is. Verse 13, some of us are Jews and some of us are Gentiles. Some of us are slaves and some of us are free. But we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit. And we all share the same spirit. Notice mm. that's the uppercase S, which means the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Ooh, God. Good, right. Sir. And so we've all received the Holy Spirit. And be, so that's what makes us the same. Somebody say the same. The same. That's right. Regardless of where you come from, your economical back sta uh, status, your uh, ethical back status, uh, 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 
ethnic ethnicity <laughs> is what <laughs> ethnicity or definitely yes your ethnicity <laughs> right regardless of those things mm -hmm. whatever it is when we have Christ and God on the inside of us the Holy Spirit alive on the inside of us that's what makes us the same somebody say the same the same it is in the same way that God wants us to be united mm -hmm. how he desires for us to be the same that is so good pastor and he wants us to be the same but the same in our mindset Mind. somebody say my mindset my mindset and and the same mindset in how we view situations how we address or approach people uh -huh. and and how we deal with important things in our lives to show our love towards many mm -hmm. Now, we're the love church. That's right. Uh -huh, and we're teaching people to know, show, and, and grow. grow in the unconditional love of Jesus Christ. And all who gather and connect and hitch their wagon to our, our ministry, our church, the mantle in which God gives to us is to share that same mindset yes. on everything that we approach, on everything that we talk to, on uh, uh, not everything that we talk to, but every person that we speak to, that we do it with Love. Somebody say, I got to do it with love. Got to do it with love. We got to have that love towards them. This is what is unitedly and uniformly shows us to be Christian. That's right. Exactly right. Isn't there a scripture? And I'm not like, isn't there a scripture? But there is a scripture, right? That also shares that, it, you know, how do they know that we are of, of God or that we are Christians is for our love for one another. And so I would love to point out to you guys what it says in 1 Corinthians um, chapter 1, Verse 10, right? Right. Chapter okay. 1, verse 10, which leads us into our first point tonight, our first principle, which is yes. to speak the same thing, a.k.a. homo legeo. We'll break that out after we read the text. But speak the same thing, homo legeo. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, the A portion. The A portion. Uh -huh. All right. So this is where it reads. It says, now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you all have a uniform testimony, speaking the same thing. And then let me jump over real quick to Revelations 12, 11, the A portion. And I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation. And they have defeated him, which is Satan, by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony. All right, come on back. Come on back. You guys have heard that, um, that scripture read several times before, probably in the King James Version, where it says, we have overcome uh -huh. by by uh, the, the blood, blood of the lamb, lamb mm -hmm. and the word, word of, of our testimony. testimony. And what I love about that is that we are overcomers, especially when we have Jesus Christ right. in our life. And so I love how the scripture is saying that we have to speak the same thing. That funny little word in the beginning, homo legeo, that homo you're talking legeo. about. Sir. Right. So what Paul is writing here to the church of Corinth in uh, chapter one, verse 10, the A portion family is just where it was highlighted by Pastor Yvonne that have the same uniform testimony. Yes. What is that uniform? Meaning united. What does it uh, united mean? The same testimony that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes, he That's is. the base foundation of all of our testimony. That's why Revelations 12 and 11, what Pastor Yvonne read, makes more sense when Jesus gave his revelation to John to write it down. He says, we defeated Satan. Mm -hmm. How? Because by the blood of the Lamb, which was his sacrifice on uh -huh. Calvary for you and I, and then guess what? By the word of our testimony, which is Jesus Christ is Lord. Ooh. That's how we defeat Satan That's how by we do it. speaking the same thing. So you're wondering, how can I be the same? How can I speak really fast? Like I'm from Brooklyn, New York, like Pastor Vincent at 100 miles an hour. You can't. You <laughs> possibly can't and you probably okay, shouldn't. Probably but, shouldn't. Hey, don't be like that. But the fact <laughs> of the matter is, you can have the same testimony of me, which is Jesus Christ is Lord. Come on, say that at home. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is, is Lord. Lord. And by us having the same testimony, not only do we speak the same as Christ is commanding us to do so, but we also defeat that little little greasy booger satan that's what i'm talking about so when we speak the same thing say speak the same thing speak the same thing we are defeating satan and exalting yes. jesus christ as lord so what are some of the things that we should be speaking uh that are the same so what yes. are some so uh well, first thing is truth we should be speaking the truth the Ooh, same way good. ephesians 4 and 15 says instead we will speak the truth in love, mm. growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. Now, 
You're coming back, as you guys and gals know this, we have a mid-year mantra. The Lord's MVP in 2023. You That's may right. say, I thought I heard this text before. Because you have. Because this is the, this, the text attached to our mid-year mantra. The Lord's MVP, maturity, victory, prosperity in 2023. Uh, but here it is. The truth in love is what's yes. going to help us to grow up in every way more and more like Christ, who's the head of the church. So here's your application for this particular point. Wow. How do we speak the truth in love? Well, we cover this in a series called truth yeah go figure dang. dang last year if you haven't seen it trust me bless your whole soul go back and watch it it was taught by yours truly back last year <laughs> but the reality is this how do we speak the truth in love sometimes we need a practical application or even a formula pastor yvonne so it's up on your screen right now this is how we speak the truth in love by time and what do you mean time pastor vincent well in its right timing by way of the holy spirit that's how we speak it we don't say it when you feel like saying it wow. we say it when the holy spirit leads you to say it that's so that's good. time Plus, tone. What's tone? Mm -hmm. What's the tone of my voice? Right now, I sound cheery. I sound energetic. Yes. I sound very jovial and very convincing. So you would more than likely receive some truth that I'm giving you. But if I sound mean, if I sound disappointed, wow. if I sounded angry, somebody's not going to receive the truth regardless of whether it's in time or in season. So it's got to be the right tone. Say tone. Tone. So we have time plus tone, but then we have to add one more thing. We have to add the text or the testimony Ooh, or both. Good. And what's the text or the testimony? It's just what it sounds like. It's the word of God or the word of your testimony. Just yeah. like we heard read from Revelations 12 and 11. Because both uh, individually or collectively together is what's going to bring forth truth for that person that God right. assigned you to speak truth and love to. And that's what equals truth. Come on back. So that's the application. Time plus tone plus text or testimony or the combination of the two is what makes truth truth. Yes. What is one of the other things that we should be speaking also together or homo legale? Well, we should be speaking, Pastor Yvonne, life, Ooh. which is God's word. That's we should good. be speaking life, not death, but be speaking life, which is God's word. We should always be speaking as if the glass is half full, not half empty. Ooh. Half full and not half, not empty, half empty, right? We should be speaking from a place of pessimism, but always optimism, right? We should always be talking like our hope doesn't have a hole in it. Ooh, Ooh that's so good to me, yeah, right? Yeah, you're not seeping and leaking. Exactly. <laughs> the water of the word. Exactly. And there's a great example of that over in Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. We know this as the, the story of the, the centurion who came to Jesus Christ. Again, a Gentile. It wasn't yet his time, but came and made Jesus Christ the way the text says. And he marveled at this man's faith pastor That's Yvonne right. because he came and he made a request for his servant that was living in his house that he would be healed and so this is where we pick up in the narrative in verse 8 of chapter 8 of Matthew and it says the centurion answered and said to the Lord Lord I am not worthy that thou should comest underneath my roof he said Jesus you ain't even got to come to my house but wow. check it out in the second portion of the verse family he says but speak the word only my goodness and my servant shall be healed come Ooh. on back and what he recognized right there family pastor Yvonne was that all he had to do was speak the words. Ooh, that's all funny. he had to do, Pastor Yvonne, was open his mouth and speak the word. So it was interesting because the centurion was speaking to the word, which is the word wrapped in flesh, which is Jesus Christ, mm. to tell him to speak the word. So if we speak the words, then that means we're speaking Jesus Christ. Wow. And all he said was speak the word only. So that's the application to this point, Pastor Yvonne, is speak the word only, not also. Ooh. Speak the word only, only not, not also. also. Now, I know that's setting off question marks at home. What does that mean, Pastor What does Vincent? that mean? What do you mean only and not also? Just as it sounds. If we start enamoring, we start mixing, we start making mm. our words the words of God on a regular basis, then we'll speak only his word in times when people need it. Instead of saying, well, this is what I would do, and I think the scripture says this. That's speaking the word also, also, in addition to what you have to say. It's not going to work. At the end of the day, beloved, I've works. said it from the pulpit, and I'll say it here in Bible study tonight, you don't want Vincent's words. No. You, when you do ask me, well, what do you think I should do about this, Pastor? Well, I'm glad that you asked. The word of God says, ba 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 Right. Or sometimes I won't even lead off with that preface and say the word of God said or Jesus said or Paul said or John said or Peter said or Matthew said. I'll just say, you know what? The words. Uh, no, I, I, you do say the word. I do say the word. Most, Most times, times I say the word. Yeah. But more than likely, I'll just mix it in with my conversation and it's become so natural. I love it. We've been we've been uh, 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 told that our, we're camouflage preachers, meaning <laughs> that we're sharing the word so 
uh, fluidly with you through our common everyday speech that you don't even realize you're receiving the work. Oh, that's good. And that should be the case for each and every one of us, family. Right. And lastly, the other thing that we should all be speaking the same. So we should be speaking the same in truth. Say truth. Truth. We should all be speaking the same in life. Say life. Life. And the last thing that we should be speaking the same in is encouragement. Say encouragement. Ooh, encouragement. Colossians 4 and 6 in the New Living Translation as well as the message version says, let your conversation, this is 4 and 6, let your conversation be gracious and attractive. Ooh. Ooh. Let it be gracious and attractive. Like That's Pastor beautiful. Yvonne is physically, she's gracious and she's attractive. Well, let your speech be gracious and attractive. Now, I may go 100 miles an hour, but I like to think it's woven together graciously and attractively. <laughs> They yeah, see the way she's laughing. She knows it's gracious and attractive, <laughs> meaning to be seasoned with, with salt, salt, which means to preserve somebody, oh, wow. not to condemn somebody. Wow. To build somebody up constructively, not to be destructive in their life. Come wow. on, Come Holy on, Spirit. Spirit. And it goes on. So so that you will have the right response for everyone. Wow. In the message version, Pastor Yvonne, it says, be gracious in your speech. The goal is to bring out the best in others in conversation, not put them down or not cut them off. Ooh, that's good. Not put them down and not cut them off. And what I love about that is there is an application that we can apply to that. It, it's on the screen, so go ahead and read it along with me. Speak kindly to others. Seek out something nice to say to someone daily. I do speak kind to people. Yeah. Do we, though? Do we? Do we? Yeah, because it, we need to be able to work in and encompass God's word in our speech. As Pastor has said, you know, um, we've been said uh, to, to be the type of people to be camouflage preachers because a lot of things we say is um, the word mixed into it. And we, we got that sprinkled Jesus in our speech is what certain people would say. Yeah, we, we just... Sprinkling in. Yeah, throw some little Jesus on it. But it's not a little Jesus when you're in your word on a regular. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Uh, not, I mean, it says the daily bread, not birthday cake. Oof. Mm, yeah, birthday cake. And the reason why I use that term, because birthday cake, you get that once one a time, year. Once a year. You get it once a year, your own personal birthday cake. But you can get your own personal um, rhema word daily. Daily. Ooh, you can get daily. it daily. You can get a Logos word daily. daily. And so wh what am I saying? I'm saying that if we are in the word daily, then we could speak the word daily. And just as pastor was giving us all kind of different examples, one of those things is being able to speak life mm -hmm. daily and not death. Mm. Meaning shutting things down or shutting things off. God wants us to be able to do these things daily. Somebody say, I got to do it daily. Got to do it daily. And the things that we got to do is get into that word. And what are the things that we can do to make sure that we don't look like the world? Mm. But we can look like Christ. So what are the things that we can do that doesn't make us look like the world? Well, this is what we can do. We can speak the same. How do we speak the same? We encourage, we edify, uh -huh. and then we uplift one another. Edify means to build each other yeah, up. Yeah, we build each other up. And I know some of these sound like really big spiritual words and this, that, and the other, but it's not. It's about that, that affirmation. It's about that encouragement. Many people I talk to on a daily, they're like, man, you always have something positive to say. I'm intentional about that. I'm intentional about listening to what it is that someone comes and brings to me. And then I respond intentionally with life, mm. with life. What is that life? Not my own life and my own experiences. And sometimes God allows me to do that. Like the text that we read from, because we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. Ooh. So I will give you some of my testimony, but I'm giving it to you with life because I'm going to speak the word only what the word did in my life. Come on. What the word did to get me out of the muck and mortary clay, what the word did to get me out of that sick bed, what the word did to get me out of that negative thinking 
speaking in those evil forebodings what the word did. Somebody say what the word did. What the word did. But what the word does for us, only it, it, it only does it if we speak it. Got to speak it. So we got to be able to speak encouraging words to one another. We got to be able to edify so that, and the edifying, as Pastor said, it's mm. the building. Mm -hmm. It's the building us, us. Some of us feel like we're lacking something because we, uh, man, I have all of these pieces, but I feel like I'm just leveled out. But if we learn how to hear from one another in truth and in love, then we'd be able to stack those, those pieces and we can level up. Come on, man. We can level up. Speaking about level up, that brings me to the thought process of building or establishing or constructing something or yeah. growing or raising up. And before you, I, I know I, I cut off. She's getting ready to go on to point two. Y'all get ready to point two. Here it comes. <laughs> but one of the, the, the foolish things I, I know about our English language or the speak or, or one of these adages and age sayings that we say is, can I give you some constructive criticism? Mm. Stop saying that. Oh, wow. That's silly and it's stupid. And here's why. <laughs> Because if you're going to be constructive, then why is you why are you criticizing anybody? Wow. Then that really what what it makes is it's destructive. We're just trying to put some some try a positive spin on it. You're trying to put perfume wow. on a pig. Stop lying. That's like saying with all due respect, you get ready to be disrespectful. Yeah. Right. We don't even realize that the world is programmed us to say silly stuff, and we're already going in with a negative connotation. Because if you're going to say, "Well, I want to be constructive," then just speak life like Pastor Yvon was saying. Don't be destructive, right? Because guess what? When we're criticizing, then we're being condemnatory, right? And guess what? You have no heaven, hell, or jail cell to put anybody in. But if you speak God's word and speak yes. the word only, beloved, then guess what? Now we can lead somebody to a place that their Holy Spirit can come Ooh. in with conviction, not wow. condemnation. Not criticism, yes. but with conviction, that's what's going to help our brother and sister get back on the right train. Oh Stop goodness. with the constructing criticism because it ain't real. Wow, because it ain't real. That's good, Pastor. Okay, so point number two. Two. Be perfectly, maturely joined together uh -huh. in the same mind, thought, and will, and emotion. Uh -huh. Ooh, I know some of y'all are like, I don't think like he thinks. Mm, I don't think like she think. I know we're already going there. But God says that we can do that. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Um, Back to 1 and 10. Yeah, 1 yep. and 10. It's the and B I, portion. It's the B portion. It's like the B side of the album. <laughs> go to the B. It's always good on the B side. It's the B side of the album. I pray that you guys are there. It's up on the screen. And it says, and that there be no schisms or or dissensions Woo. ooh that's a big one dissensions or divisions among you but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind, mind. oh come back come back we have to have the same mind. Now, no, I don't think like Pastor Vince, and Pastor Vince doesn't think like me. Thank God. But <laughs> not because it's a knock not on her. Not because it's a knock. Because the real no, I said thank. I really was saying thank God because she don't think like yeah, me. Yeah, his timing was a little off. On I'm that, sorry. But it's all right. Exactly. I'm delayed. See I'm what I'm I already forgive him. Right. Exactly. Because <laughs> if she thought like me, we'd be in trouble. We'd be in real trouble. G. You guys would be, uh, but it, it doesn't matter. But you were but, making a point. Oh, I'm making the point that we are not the same and we don't think the same. However, we can have the same mind. Yes. We that's, can have the same mind. Saying. I don't have the same thoughts. He doesn't have the same thoughts. Mm -hmm. But when we share our thoughts, we can come and bring it into the same mind. That's good. And how do we bring that into the same mind is because we're using the common um, denominator, which is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, to help us get to the goal, to uh, uh, for us to have the mission. And so to be similar, but not, not the, the same. same. Similar, but not yeah, the same. Yeah, similar, but not the same. You know, you use two terms there uh, in the text, Pastor Yvonne, as you was expounding about schisms and dissensions. Somebody yeah. say that at home. Say schisms. Schisms. And dissensions. And dissensions. Well, first, let me define what a schism is. It sounds kind of weird, but check it out. It's a split or division between strongly opposed sections or mm. parties. We know that in our society, red side, uh, blue side, Ooh. left side, right side, mm. <laughs> Lord side, wrong side. Anyway. Anyway, uh, caused by differences in opinion or belief. Yes. Come back. But here it is, family. How can we have a schism in the body of Christ if, if Jesus Christ is Lord for all Ooh. of us? There should be no separation. There should be no division right there, right? But then also dissension is defined as a disagreement that leads 
to discord a disagreement that leads to discord again we should not be in disagreement yes. about jesus christ as lord that's pretty cut dry and to the point matter of fact jesus speaks specifically in proverbs 6 16 through 19 about the sixth thing that the lord hates and Ooh. the seventh things that he calls an abomination Buckle in because this is a short but very intense list. And by the way, if Jesus hates it, God hates it, the Holy Spirit hates it, it makes it okay for you to hate it too. Check Ooh, this period. out. In verse 17, it says, uh, 16, it says, there are six things the Lord hates, no seven things he detests or calls an abomination. 17 says, haughty eyes, mm -hmm. a lying tongue, hands that kill the innocent, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, a witness uh, a false witness who pours out lies. And lastly, on the list of the hit parade is a person who sows discord in a family. Wow. That is the schism and the dissension that is mentioned earlier in the text by uh, Paul in 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. God has knit us together mm -hmm. in the faith. God says, like he said in Galatians 6 and 10, that we should do good to those in the we forever should. family of faith. Like we said, that you're a part of here at Agape or whatever church that you attend. You're a part of a, fam a family that God has adopted you into. Yes. So you should be mindful. You should def definitively make sure that you're always making sure that you're not the one who's sowing discord in that family. Wow, that Meaning that so you're good. always acting as if you're of separate mind, of yes. separate will. You're a separatist. Mm -hmm. You're a eye on an eye. Island, who is isolated all by yourself <laughs> my god my god all by yourself and, and essentially what pastor vincent is really trying to convey to us tonight is that this is not the way not the way it's not the way of yahweh but how do we make it the way of yahweh mm -hmm. well the only way that we can do that because we said we overcome by the blood of lamb word of our testimony and that's through jesus christ right and then god our father is covering us but the way that we get our mind and our will and our emotions um the assistance that we need is the helper somebody say the helper the helper and that helper is the holy, holy spirit, spirit. Come on. And I'm, Holy I'm, I'm so, activate. yeah, Holy Spirit activate. I'm so in love with just the concept of knowing that God would give us this particular type of help here on this side of heaven, mm -hmm. because this is truly what we need to help get our soul under, under control. control, our mind, our thoughts, our will, and our emotions. Now, did she just say our mind and our thoughts? Yeah, because it's two separate things. Mm. Uh -huh. Because what you're harboring and what you're holding in the safe of your mind is your thoughts. Come on. So there's a container. That's your mind. Mm -hmm. But your thoughts that you pour in there and that you're holding it in there, it, it becomes the control mechanism of if you're willing to do something or not. Uh -huh. And then if you're willing to do it or not, uh, uh, what your attitude is about it. When you're your, doing it. When you're doing Predicated it. Predicated off of the thought that you had. Right. The mind in which you made up. And the will in which you set out in. Right. Come and on. so those emotions really go to show if uh, if you're willing or not. Or if you're on an emotional no. roller coaster. Come on for that. Okay. But all of that shows your level of maturity. Come on, man. All of it shows your level of maturity. And so here, let, can I just focus in and tune in and, and give a, a laser focus on the mind? Break it down. God wants our mind to be washed by his word Woo! washed by his word so let me let me let me get a little um biblical soap on you right here in philippians 4 and 8 and go ahead and turn there and your bible is going to be on the screen make sure that when you get there in your bible highlight it yep because this is where you need to highlight your thoughts. Your thoughts. This is where your um, your mind needs to be washed. And every time that you have a negative, stinking thinking, Ooh. evil forebodings, perverted meditation, go to this scripture. Because sometimes we sit there and we're like, I just, I feel like I can't get out of this uh, Eeyore thinking. I can't get out of this low place. God says, I have a script for that. Take your medicine. Are you ready? Here it is. Finally, brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure and whatever is lovely whatever is admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy 
think about such things. This is what blesses me about that. I'm going to read this one more time. I'm leave it on the screen. But every time I say what it is that God says, the whatever is supposed to, to be, I want you to think of this because sometimes we get into a place where all we think about is what is right before us. So then when we get in our place, we want to read it like this. Finally, and say finally to yourself. And self says, huh? Whatever is true, somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Whatever is noble, somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Whatever is right, somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Whatever is pure, somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Whatever is lovely, somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Whatever is admirable, somebody say Jesus. Jesus. And if anything is excellent and praiseworthy i know who's praiseworthy do you know who's praiseworthy his name is jesus his name is jesus think on such things think. now you can come on back this is where your mind should be it should be on jesus we should fix our mind on jesus because when we don't have our focus and our mind on jesus it puts us in a perverted mindset mm. it puts us in a low thinking and god wants us to have an application on tonight and i'm throwing it up on the screen right now stop perverted meditation come on now that's just, simply just stop it. doing the opposite in our natural selves that aren't being spirit led, but being fleshly led yes. by our emotions that are out of control or our soul that's out of control. But all that's doing is essentially saying, because God's word says meditate on his word. Oh. Meditate on, and we already Day described night. Jesus as the word, which is why your thoughts should be following and set yes. and fixed on Jesus. And so a uh, perverted meditation means that you're not doing that. You're instead thinking about the, the, the issues, circumstances, the circumstances, the, the problem. problems of life, yeah. and instead of meditating on the thing. And we call that anxiousness, and anxiety, depression. We call it all these other different things. And God says, stop perverting stop the meditation. Doing that. And not for one moment is Pastor Vincent or Pastor Yvonne saying to you that your issue is not worthy of time and thinking right. about. Whatever the issue is, whatever the circumstance is, whatever um, uh, the situation is going on in your life, there is a thought that you put towards it. But then when you once you put that thought towards it, you need to be able to take it somewhere. Come on. And where we're telling you to take it to is take it to Jesus. Take it to meaning Jesus. Take it to the word. Uh, speak the word only concerning and directly in to the situation. A lot of times things are brought to Pastor Vince. And if I can just test it. Uh, testify as a witness when I'm watching how he's witnessing Christ and counseling um, concerning Christ. People bring things to Pastor Vince all the time. And before he goes to say anything, he asks this question to the individual that be before him. Can I speak into it? Can I speak into it? And this is where we need to do. We need to be able to speak into it. That's right. But as we're teaching you on tonight, don't speak into it any old kind of way. Speak into it with God's word. And so as Pastor Vince, he's going to help us. How do we speak into it? We got to be willing, right? Got Tim? to be willing. So first we have our mind and our thoughts, but then we have our will, which is the second com yeah. component of the, the of the soul. We have our mind and then our will. Say our mind. Our mind. And then our will. Our will. And then David, our who we know King David helped us out with Psalm 51 this is a famous uh, Psalm 10 through 12 where he said create in me a clean heart O God yes. renew a loyal spirit within me do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me here it is in verse 12 restore to me the joy of your salvation yes. and make me willing Woo. to obey you Ooh, willing willing to obey you Luke 22 and 42 gave us the summary of this very thing the later part of the lineage coming from David who we know is Jesus who said father if you are willing remove this cup from me nevertheless my God not my will mm. but your will thine will be done Ooh. right so we have to align our will with his will that's how we get it done the application for aligning our will with his will is to seek, seek and him. get lined up mm. with the will of god for your life daily daily and the only way that we can do that is that we got to grab a hold of our emotions Ooh. sometimes our emotions just take us away like the like the waves 
<laughs> of the sea. We are, we're coming in and out of the shoreline. And God said that we really got to grab a hold of our emotions. Hold on a second. Wait. The, but my emotions, uh, how I get a hold of them? They, ain't they mine? They're yeah, your, they, they're they your are, emotions. They are So you should emotions. be able to get a hold of them. You should. And you should have some self-control. And that self-control should tell itself that I got to give this to the word. I got to give this to Jesus. I got to give it to the one who can hold me all together. Mm -hmm. and stop swinging me back and forth and this is how we do it go with me in psalms psalms 34 17 and 8 um, through 18 and this is what it says when his people pray for help uh -huh. come back real quick are we even praying Ruh -ruh. can i just ask that question i mean this is bible study it is and we're given all of this word but have we stopped and prayed about it? You know, my, my son and daughter, they called me just last week and they said that we're, we're going to this church and it blesses us. The little bracelets that they gave to us, it gives us a daily reminder. And I said, well, what does it say on the bracelet? It said, pray first. Mm. How many of us just take the time over any situation or just daily getting up and we pray first? God is looking for us to come and commune with him in conversation. And we do that through prayer. Okay, back to the scripture. And it says, when his people pray for help, he listens and he rescues them from their troubles. Come on. The Lord is there to rescue all who are discouraged and have given up hope my god today that he is saying that he's there for us and many of us feel like well how do i even know that he's there sometimes he sends you um uh, the awareness of his presence in your life when a brother or sister sends you a text message with a scripture of encouragement that's right it's sending his word it's sending life to your situation it's sending you hope it's sending you hope the hope that you feel that has a hole in it or like the scripture is saying that you've given up hope on so here's the application uh -huh. stop calling <laughs> drama, drama dumpsters. dumpsters and what do i mean by drama dumpsters stop calling the friend that's not giving you the word Woo. stop speaking but more than willing yeah. to receive the drama but more than willing and tap into the multitude of wise counsel. I'm sure that if, if you're not a member of Agape Church, but you are a member of a church somewhere, that you have elders, you have pastors, you have deacons that are in the Word, that are studying the Word, that has um, daily scriptures that they're grabbing all throughout the day, and whomever it is that is in the Word daily, that's who you should call. Gotta call them. Don't call um, the uh, even upon yourself if, if if you're not in the word. Sometimes we you got to get a, a, a helpline, right? That's right. Call a friend. That's right. Phone a friend. <laughs> Phone a friend. That's right. Who's in the don't, word of God? Don't call Ghostbusters. Don't call Tyrone. <laughs> call the wise counsel that God has placed around you in your life. Right. As you join the forever family of faith, and that's where we're at, family. We're talking about unity. Stop calling on the drama dumpster. Because here's the difference, though. That's still is all predicated off of you that friend who's always negative nancy they're going to be more than help uh, yeah. more than willing to receive your negative testimony or the negative that you want to pour out or it's predicated and then that wise counsel is going to be more than willing to speak life into you right. the, the 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 awareness of the fact that the the decision still rests solely with you yes since we're saying soul it yes. rests solely, solely with you which friend or which person you're going to call mm. Which way are you going to go? Left or right? Up and, or down? And I love the old saints. The old saints say that they call on their friend and his name is Jesus. Jesus. And what kind of friend is Jesus? He's the friend that laid down his life for us. And so, people of God, as tonight, as we have been encouraging you to stay unified, we gave you um, two points out of the ten. First two. Uh-huh. We'll be back with more. <laughs> we'll be back with more. But as we close, please remember, remember to follow the instructions of the Word of God that has been given to you from, from Pastor Vincent and I on tonight. The community of unity, how God wants us to be together. This is how we grow. That's right. This is how we mature. This is how we get victory. And this is how we get prosperity. Amen.
going into the end of 23. It can yes. still happen. It can happen right now because if it can happen anywhere, it can happen here. If it can happen to anyone, it can happen to you. Yes. If it can happen at any time, it can happen right now. Right Somebody now. say now. Now. That's what I'm talking about. So tonight, again, as we finish up our third installation, uh, installment rather, to our series on unity, we are thankful and grateful that God has connected us for this time in this virtual space. But yes. before we go, we would never dare to have the privilege and honor of your time without opening up with the invitation to salvation somebody out there tonight or somebody who's going to click on this and replay this uh, message later because it was shared by an awesome digital evangelist like somebody like you ding right but somebody's going to get this message and hear that their hope had a hole in it wow. hear that they've been receiving destructive criticism and hear that they need the words of life and this might this message might be it your invitation to church might be it whatever the case may be but tonight we're speaking to that man or that woman who needs to know the lord jesus christ as their personal lord and savior yes. so that way their testimony Morning could be that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes. And if that's you out there tonight, my beloved brother and sister, you hear the tugging or the knocking on the door of your heart that you know you want to let Jesus in, that you realize that you have not been pardoned from your sin and that you need him to be your Lord and Savior, this invitation is for you. And I, I just want to pray one prayer over you as we get ready to go, a confession prayer that you'll say after me that will indeed do what Romans 10 verses 9 through 10 says, accept, believe, and confess the Lord Jesus Christ. And then by doing so, you will indeed be saved. My second invitation as we get ready to skate tonight is that you, my beloved brother and sister, who have salvation, but have gotten outside the fold, God says come home and you can do it tonight here on the 30th of August 2023 and return back. Be recommitted to the commitment that you're already committed to. And then lastly, go ahead and drop it in the thread in the comments. If you want to join us here, hit your wagon to an awesome church that's growing and going where we're teaching uh, people to know, show, and grow in the unconditional love of God drop it in there. Hey, I want to be a virtual member. Yes. Hey, I want to be a physical member and I'll be at church on Sunday. We would love to see you at 351 Lewis Lane where it's going down and we're having our celebration Sunday <laughs> service at 11, 11 a.m. So as we go, let me pray for each and every one of you this one prayer uh, uh, of salvation, rededication, and again, for those yes. and a blessing over your life. Heavenly Father, we thank you now. And for those out there who are seeking salvation tonight, Lord, uh, as they repeat after me that, Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. And I accept you. And I accept you. Believe in you. Believe in you. And confess. And confess. That you are the son. That you are a son. Of the living God. Of the living God. Who died for me. Who died for me. On Calvary. On Calvary. And three days later. And three days later. Rose again. Rose again. For my victory. For my victory. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. Turn me into your MVP. Turn me into your MVP. That I may mature. That I may mature. Have victory. Have victory. And prosperity. And prosperity. In 23. In 23. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And now, Heavenly Father, I thank you now also for those who have decided to return back to you. That who have committed to you in salvation already, Lord, but want their mind, their will, and their emotion to line back up with you. That they want to become the same back with the body of Christ and the forever family that you dedicated and inherited them into, Lord. I thank you now for these, your sons and daughters, as we get ready to depart from this virtual space and place that you would go with them, that you would give them your peace, your power, and the prosperity that you have for their life. Dear Lord, I thank you now for these blessings and many more. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. amen. Hey, family, thanks for joining us tonight at 707. Again, go ahead and share this message with others. We'll see you for Celebration Sunday, Sunday. where your jeans and your T-shirt is going down. It's always a great time where we're going to celebrate birthdays, anniversaries in September. And, of course, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We look forward to seeing you there. Be kind to one another and always love, love like, like him. him. See you soon. God bless.